So the respiratory examination begins by appropriate hand hygiene. So the first point is to go and introduce yourself to the patient. Hello, Mr. Smith. My name is Dr. O'Brien. Is it okay if I examine you? Yes, sure. Very good. Thank you. So you step to the end of the bed and you begin your observations. First, make some general observations around the bed, looking for any bedside paraphernalia that might be appropriate. In the context of the respiratory examination, you may uh, spot some inhalers that uh, indicate the patient may have an underlying obstructive airways disease. You may see a chest strain or uh, some non-invasive ventilation or a CPAP machine. Comment on all these as they are very important. Also, the patient may be on oxygen, and this is the time to comment on it. Uh, he or she may have an air-driven air nebulizer or an oxygen-driven nebulizer, which is visible. Also comment on that. Uh, there may be some physiotherapy devices near the bedside, such as a flutter device or a PEP mask. Uh, also, there may be some nutritional supplements, which may be of use in patients with uh, poor nutritional status. So then begin by in inspecting the patient from the end of the bed. Uh, comment on the patient's level of uh, distress. At, this, at the moment, our patient is sitting comfortably uh, at 45 degrees uh, and is not in any visible respiratory distress. So to begin with the respiratory examination of the patient, calculate the, resp the respiratory rate, as this is a very uh, important marker. So begin your timing and ca count the breaths over a 15 second period. Okay, and the patient's respiratory breath, uh, respiratory rate is uh, 14. Then uh, comment on any uh, abnormalities of the chest wall, such as a pectus carinatum or a pectus excavatum that can be immediately visible from the end of the bed. Also, the patient may have a, a midline thoracotomy scar or sternotomy scar. In childhood, patients may uh, develop respiratory distress and they may have evidence of this in later, later life by the presence, presence of a Harrison sulcus under, the, costa, uh, under the, the costal margin. Then progress to examine the hands. Uh, to begin, examine the patient's hand. Do you mind if I take your hand, sir? Yes, sir. Examine the hand for any evidence of tar staining, which may be evident and indicate uh, the, uh, smoking status. Also examine for any uh, blue discoloration indicative of peripheral cyanosis. Uh, look at the colour of the nails for any evidence of uh, yellow nail syndrome. Also, uh, look at the angle of the, the nails to examine for clubbing. To do this, examine uh, the angle of the nail to see if there's any loss of nail angle indicative of early stage clubbing. Also, you may examine nail, the nail bed for any evidence of fluctuance by lightly rolling the, the nail between your fingers. Also, you may run your finger over the end of the nail bed to see if there's any uh, loss of angle uh, palpable. Then turn your hand, the hand over and examine for any other uh, abnormalities. Occasionally you may, you may detect uh, wasting of the small muscles of the hand which may be indicative of, some, of a brachial uh, plexopathy. Okay. So on completion of inspection of the hands, ask the patient to extend both arms into the air and pull back the wrists like you're pushing the back of a bus. Then examine for any evidence of asterixis. This can take up to one minute to become evident. Then progress to, to examine the pulse. You may count the pulse over a 15 second period to determine its rate. You should also comment on the volume, the character and the rhythm. Then you can measure, progress to measure the blood pressure. To measure blood pressure, you apply the sphygmum manometer across the upper limb. Place the arrow over lying where the brachial artery should lie and rest the patient arm uh, by the bed. Are you comfortable there? Yes, okay. Firstly, to measure the blood pressure, you should inflate the cuff while palpating on the radial artery. Once the cuff is inflated, gradually release the, the, the air until the pulse is again palpable. Once the pulse is palpable, this corresponds to the systolic pulse. Okay. Then, to measure the systolic and diastolic pressure, place the diaphragm of your stethoscope over the brachial artery. Then, inflate the, the cuff 
until the systolic pressure is 40 to 50 millimeters of mercury above the measured uh, radial systolic pu uh, pulse pressure. Gradually release the pressure and listen for audible sounds. Once the first Karakoff sound is, uh, is heard, this corresponds to the systolic pulse pressure. The, the diastolic pulse pressure corresponds to when these uh, sounds disappear. You then may remove the blood pressure cuff. Then progress to examine the patient's face. First inspect for any evidence of secondary polycythemia. Then progress to, to look at the patient's eyes. Do you mind, sir, looking up for me? Yeah. You're examining the eyes for any evidence of pallor or any evidence of conjunctival uh, suffusion, which may in uh, indicate uh, chemosis. Then inspect the patient's mouth. Do you mind opening your mouth, sir? Sure. Now stick out your tongue and lift it up towards, that's it. Very good, so there's no evidence of any central cyanosis. Then progress to examine the patient's neck. Sir, do you mind turning your head over that way? Thank you. Now the patient is lying comfortably at 45 degrees. We will first begin by inspection of the JVP. The JVP arises from the medial end of the sternocleidomastoid. The JVP should have a double waveform and it should be more visible than palpable. It also changes respiration and can disappear on lying flat. The JVP may also show evidence of abdominal jugular reflux. Gently press the patient's abdomen and look for an increase in height of the JVP. The height of the JVP may be measured by drawing a line horizontally across and vertically down to the angle of Louis. This height should be less than four centimeters of water. Then we shall examine the trachea. Place two fingers on the medial ends of both clavicles and then place the middle finger centrally on the trachea. This might be a little bit uncomfortable. If the trachea is deviated to the right or to the left, this will be apparent. Now examine for evidence of any tracheal tug. Take a breath in for me, sir, and out. Very good, thank you. First, examine for any evidence of uh, malformation such as a pectus carinatum or a pectus excavatum. Inspect for any evidence of scars. These not be, may not be immediately uh, identifiable. You may have to move the patient's arm. Do you mind, sir, if I lift your arm? And inspect both sides for any lateral thoracotomy scars, and there are none evident. You may also palpate the, the apex beat in the fifth intercostal space midclavicular line to see if it is displaced. This may indicate under, underlying pneumothorax or pleural effusion. And that is palpable there. So next we'd like to assess for chest expansion. Place, bo place both hands at the lower thoracic cage and your thumbs in the midline. Ask the patient to take a breath in and all the way out. On full expiration, place both thumbs on the midline and ask the patient to take a big breath in again. As you can see, both thumbs have moved approximately five centimeters apart, indicating symmetrical chest expansion. Next, we shall examine for tactile framatus. P place the edge of your hand over the patient's chest and ask him to say 99. Please say 99. 99. And again, please. 99. 99. 99. And on the other side. 99. 99. 99. 99. You may also feel over the, the lateral aspects 99. of both chests, and again. 99. Very good, thank you. Now we shall progress to percussion. To ensure an adequate percussion note, place the palm of your hand on the patient's chest wall. Then, leaving the middle finger in place, lift the remaining fingers off the chest wall. Percuss the middle phalange of the left middle finger ensuring that you lift your finger off to, to, to ensure a resonant note. Begin your percussion by percussing over the apex on the right side. And again over the clavicle. And then similarly on the other side. Next, we'd like to auscultate the, uh, the anterior chest wall. Pl 
place the diaphragm of your stethoscope over the apex of the right lung and ask the patient to take a breath in and out for me. Now. And again, please. And again. Similarly on the left side. Comment on the presence of vesicular breath sounds. If wheeze is present or crackles, comment on them also. Now we'd like to progress to the posterior chest examination. Now, could I get you to sit at the side of the bed for me, please? To examine for cervical lymphadenopathy, begin by palpating the submental, submandibular, and cervical chain nodes. Then palpate the preauricular, postauricular, and occipital nodes. Complete the examination by examining the posterior triangle and the supraclavicular nodes. To examine the posterior chest, you may position your patient sitting on the side of the bed. Alternatively, you can ask the patient to move down the bed and examine them from behind. Begin again with inspection, commenting on any uh, subtle kyphoscoliosis that may not have been evident from the front. Again, complete your inspection for any scars that may be evident on the lateral aspects of the chest wall. Then begin by palpation. Following inspection of the chest, assess for chest expansion. Take a breath in and out for me. And out. To assess for chest expansion from, from the posterior, place both hands on the lateral chest wall. Place the thumbs in the midline and ask the patient to take a breath in and all the way out. Then firmly place the thumbs into the midline and ask the patient to take another big breath in. Note that my thumbs have moved approximately five centimeters apart symmetrically. This is normal. Following assessment of chest expansion, you may then assess vocal fremitus. Place the edge of your palm against the patient's chest and ask him to say 99. Say 99, please. 99. And again. 99. And again. 99. And again. 99. And again. 99. Again. 99. Again. 99. One more time. 99. Thank you. Next, we shall proceed to percussion. It may be necessary to ask the patient to fold his arms in the front to expose the back. Do you mind folding your arms, sir? Thank you. Begin by percussing the uh, posterior aspect of the chest, noting that I'm doing so in a V-like fashion down the side of the chest also in a zigzag pattern, alternating from left to right. Don't forget to percuss the lateral aspects of the chest, particularly on the right side over the right middle lobe. So next we shall move on to auscultation. Using the diaphragm of your stethoscope, again, begin from the apex of the left lung. Big breath in for me, sir. And out. And again. And again, and again, and again, and again. Don't forget to auscultate in the mid axillary line. Thank you. Comment on the presence of vesicular breath sounds. You may also comment on the presence of wheeze, crackles. Uh, should the crackles be present, you should indicate whether they are upper, middle, or lower. You should also comment on the timing in the respiratory cycle, whether they are early or late. Also on the quality of the crackles, whether they are coarse or fine. As part of the respiratory examination, you may also perform vocal fremitus. I have already previously demonstrated tactile fremitus. To perform vocal fremitus, simply place your stethoscope over the similar areas for auscultation and ask the patient to say 99. Say 99, please. 99. And again. Ninety-nine. And again. Ninety-nine. And again. Ninety-nine. And again. Ninety-nine. And one more time, sir. Ninety-nine. Thank you. That completes the examination of the posterior chest. To complete the respiratory examination, you should examine the liver for evi any evidence of hepatomegaly or uh, liver ptosis. Begin by palpating in the lower quadrant on the right side 
and ask the patient to breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. And again, sir. Gradually move your arm up the abdomen until you reach the costal margin. Okay. Big breath in for me. And out. Very good. To complete the respiratory examination, you should examine for hepatomegaly. I've already demonstrated how to palpate the inferior margin of the liver. You should then percuss out the upper and lower margins of the liver to identify the liver span. It is dull at that point and then becomes resonant. This is the liver span and it should be between 12 to 15 centimeters. To complete the respiratory examination, you may inspect the lower limbs for any evidence of rash or erythema nodosum. You may also run your hand over the anterior aspect of the shin to assess for any nodularity. Finally, to assess for pedal edema, inspect the legs and may, you may press your hand into the skin above the medial uh, ankle for any evidence of pitting edema. <laughs>